Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. The season is not over yet, absolutely not, because tonight we will play versus Roma, the last game of Serie A, not a really important game, why? Because we are already champion of Italy, but then we will go and start the way to the Champions League. Champions League, the first game on the 7th on Friday versus Lyon, a crucial game, because if we win, we go to Lisbon. If not, drama and we'll stay in Italy. So, guys, I know all of this, so we have to focus, but... Mercato. Mercato never sleeps, and we are linked with a few names. I will try to explain my vision, why we are going for those players and not for other ones. I give you an example immediately. Milik instead of Lewandowski, for example. So, Milik, we know, they are asking 50 millions. Juventus doesn't want to give 50 millions. Absolutely not. They are trying to lower it with giving for example some swap options like Bernardeschi, Bernardeschi is still deciding so we have to wait for that but why profiles like Milik that okay he's a good player but he has already be been injured it's not a top player it's not a Suarez for example or call whatever you want it's not a 150 million striker a striker like for example Juventus would love to have no why Milik People are saying probably, Giuseppe, wait, Juventus is wanting to keep that money, that big money, for a big midfielder, for example, Pogba, or another midfielder, Kroos for Real Madrid, for example. So it makes sense that we don't want to invest in a striker for 100 plus millions. But then, uh, tell me, why are we always linked with Jorginho? Jorginho is a player of Chelsea, Sarri loves him, we know all of this, but it's not a player of 100 plus million. Then you can say to me, yes, but we already have Arthur, Arthur is the 80 million euro player that we wanted and that we, that we have now. Guys, Arthur, it will not complete all the midfield because today we have so many things to do and to complete. So, my thoughts on why Milik, because that's a crucial one. And it starts with Dybala. Dybala is a player of Juventus. He's in negotiation momently to extend his contract. From 7.5 million a year, he wants to go to 15. That was the first proposal. We know that this will never happen. Juventus is proposing 10. Then maybe they will find an agreement at 12. So Dybala. But Dybala, not only the money comes, he wants a crucial role in the game. What is the crucial role in the game? It means that he will not depend on other players. He wants to start all the games. Today, we know that in season 1920, when Sarri had to make choices, for example, with a Higuain or a Dybala, they couldn't play both together. This never really happens a lot. Check the game versus Inter, for example, where Sarri preferred a trio, offensive trio with Cristiano Ronaldo, Higuain and Douglas Costa on the right, or check out the game versus Lazio for example, where Sarri preferred Higuain instead of Dybala. At the last moment Higuain was injured and we played with Dybala. Not on the right, but as a kind of falso nueve, a really strange position. What is a falso nueve? He's actually a striker, but he's not always in the box. He's, a, he's playing a bit more towards the midfield instead of being in the box. That's the Falso Nueve, guys. No history about that. No lies about that strange position. Okay, now with all that being said, if Juventus buy a top striker, a Lewandowski, for example, I like to put that name because we know it's impossible. He's playing at Bayern. He's earning a lot of money. He's not for sale. So that's why I want to take a Lewandowski, for example. Top profile. If Juventus buy a player like Lewandowski, where will Lewandowski play? As a striker. No doubt about that. As a number nine. What will be the consequence of it? It means that Dybala will be put and pushed again on the right in a 4-3-3 with Ronaldo on the left because he doesn't want to move from there. Lewandowski, for example, as a striker and Dybala on the right. Guys, if you see the past seasons, 18-19 with Allegri, where he played a lot of time on the right, Dybala was not performing as he's performing today. 
In the beginning of the season, Sarri tried him a lot to put him also on the right, Dybala was again not really performing. When was Dybala really performing? When mentally he was really fine and also when he started to play as a falso nueve, that position that I just explained. And he was also starting to perform even better when he understood from Sari that he didn't always have to go back until the midfield, but staying a bit more on the upfront. So guys, if we take a stop striker, that means that we have problems with Dybala, because then we will again in 2021 criticize him, criticize him, we will speak about Dybala not performing. Guys, Dybala will have that spot. He will play there and that's why we go for, I call them B strikers, really good strikers but top, not top level strikers like a Milik for example, with Juventus being able to play two kinds of uh, formations, starting with the 4-3-1-2. Why 4-3-1-2? While Sarri always play with a 4-3-3, you have to go back to Kulusevski. A few days ago, an article was explaining that Sarri already had a call with Kolusevsky and he wants to let him play like a number 10. A number 10 position that he tried with Bernardeschi and with Ramsey without success. Now he wants to try with Kolusevsky. Kulusevsky, if you know his history, if you look at his words, he always said that his preferred position is the number 10. So Sari has in mind to let him play as a number 10 to start the season with, after we can see what happened. So, if we play a 4-3-1-2, that means that Kulusevsky will be in the middle uh, as a 10, sorry, not as a midfielder, as a 10, with Ronaldo on the left, Dybala on the right that also go into the direction of Sarri that wants Cristiano Ronaldo a bit more closer to the goal instead of really large to the left as he's playing now in a 4-3-3. Guys, in the midfield we know that Sarri is going for a Jorginho, a Jorginho that can really distribute the balls on the left on the right, so if we go for that kind of formation we have, and I don't speak about the defense, but starting from the midfield, we go in a three midfield with Jorginho as the playmaker, the regista like Pjanic was doing. On the right we have Bentancur, on the left we will go for Arthur, even if I prefer him on the right, but that can be the midfield with Kulusevski a bit more in the front, Dybala and Ronaldo. Now, why a Milik? Because Milik, if we can have him for a cheap price like 30 million, we can easily transform that formation in a 4-3-3 with the same midfield but up front playing Cristiano Ronaldo on the left, on the right a Kulisevsky for example and as a striker the Milik depending on the game. So that means that Sarri will be able, if Sarri stays for sure, but will be able to change that formation according to the opponents we have, according, uh, for example, on how the game is evolving, starting with a 4-3-3, changing in a 4-1-2, 4-3-1-2, but with the main, main, main formation 4-3-1-2. So guys, that's why we are linked with a Milik and not with a Lewandowski, for example, because that can have a lot of consequences. So that is a bit of a uh, the vision I have about the names that are linked with Juventus in this Mercato. I don't know if some other words will appear or not. We will have time to check this, to follow this up. But at the moment, I believe this is the most probable idea of Sarri. Guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. Consider to subscribe if you want to put a like and thanks. And put in the comments what do you think about it. Ciao, grazie, forza. Juve.